through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Drop it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 256. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to give you our DVD rundown for the week of May 21st. Yeehaw! Yeehaw. I don't know why yeehaw. That's Roundup. You're I, thinking Roundup. Yeah. We're talking Rundown. I'm sorry. For once, I'm correcting I'm you. You should be shamed. I am shamed. It's like, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll. Yeah. It's <laughs> like a dog. I gotta press your nose on it so you never do it again. Do it. Yeah. Metaphorically. Speaking. Metaphorically. Yeah. Actively. <laughs> Literally. Um, I think it's a pretty interesting week, actually. You know, there's some releases that variety, aren't great, but there's there's a ton of stuff. I mean, there's even stuff like, you know, The Last Stand mm -hmm. and a few other ones that we're not even going to talk about yes. because there's more interesting stuff to talk mm -hmm. about. The first one I want to talk about is a film that came out earlier this year, one that I personally enjoyed quite a bit, and that is Side Effects. Yes. This is one of Steven Soderbergh's last films. I think it's considered his last theatrical film, mm, yeah, in, unless that. he, of course, makes more, because right. he's still got the Liberace one coming up, but that's right. for HBO. Right. So. He said he's retiring, but we'll see. <laughs> You know, he's, he's still a very like, younger guy. Dude's like Stephen King. He's like, I'm going to retire. And then he retires. And then because he's so creative and he's so successful, he gets another pet project and everyone's like, you have to do it. And then he does it. Well, he's also so young and he's so talented. It seems like a shame that a dude who's, I don't know, late 40s, mm -hmm. maybe 50, is like retiring from something yeah. he's so talented. I don't know. Yeah. But, you know, the film is about a couple who, um, Chain Tatum and Rooney, Rooney Mara, Mara. Mm -hmm. who uh, Rooney Mara kills Channing Tatum mm -hmm. and there's a lot of questions to whether the drug she was prescribed yes. by Jude Law are responsible, whether she actually knew what she was doing. Mm -hmm. you know, it's sort of like a mystery yes. thriller as they sort of reveal what's going on. Pretty pretty entertaining film. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Yeah, I'm pretty interested in it. I didn't yeah. catch it in theater, but I want to. I definitely want to see it. Love love me some Soderbergh. They're all good. I mean, you got other people. Catherine Zeta mm -hmm. Jones is in it as well. It's like you know, third or fourth collaboration with a lot of the people. Yeah, yeah. So movie. I mean, very very solid film. Very well paced and everything. The release is kind of mad though. I mean, it's got a Blu-ray, DVD, digital copy, ultraviolet. Okay, cool. That's nice. You like that? But special features. There's a three minute behind the scenes uh, featurette, which has zero insight in the movie. There's an Oblixa website experience, which is a mock Oblixa website, which mm, is the, the drug drug. in the movie. Okay. There's an Oblixa commercial, which is one minute. And then there's an Intonin commercial, which is a promo for another fictional ADH drug. So it's basically got like five minutes, ten okay. minutes worth of special features, and that's it. <laughs> no commentary tracks, no other feature ads. Was this movie very successful? Do you happen to know? I don't know. Uh, I don't think it was hugely successful. I mean, it was released by Open Road Films, okay. which is not like a major studio, yeah. and it clearly wasn't sold as a major project. Yes. But, I mean, it's still kind of disappointing. Sad, yeah. yeah. I think it's interesting that uh, originally Soderbergh had Lindsay Lohan uh, as who he wanted to be Rooney Mara's character. Oof, good choice. Yeah, he's considered the, the role Glad of Emily. He auditioned her actually three different times, but uh, the producers felt that her ongoing legal issues would disrupt the production process, so they instead recast her. I'm, I'm glad she went on to do Liz and Dick or whatever that film was called. Clearly, clearly he missed the boat mm -hmm. on Lindsay Lohan. Mm -hmm. Gosh, if only she'd been yeah, in this you movie. Know, you know, post uh, Dragon Tattoo, there was no no reason Rooney Mara would be a popular actress to throw in your movie Or just, at all. you know, better caliber. Or just, you know, skill, talent, yeah, yeah. history you, of acting. If you want to Basically go. everything. Attractiveness, uh, intelligence, uh, literacy. <laughs> I mean, Sanity. I can go down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Clarity of mind. <laughs> Whatever you want, I guess. If you go for those kind of things, we don't <laughs> The only really... thing she probably doesn't beat Lindsay Lohan with is age. But Lindsay Lohan looks much older than her, so. <laughs> That's a good question. I don't know how old Rooney Mara is, but probably not that much older. Um... Yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> no, kind of, kind of a underwhelming release in terms of the special features, yes. but it's a good movie and it comes in all sorts of formats. So Indeed. that might be enough. It's to another Soderbergh. Like, yeah. why wouldn't you want Soderbergh's last? I would uh, love to hear set. him do a commentary, though. The guy's fascinating. So, yep. just did a great uh, discussion about the state of film mm -hmm. online. So, mm -hmm. just throw that on. Seriously, <laughs> he's got that novella he's writing on Twitter. Yeah. So. Like, see, those, those like it's like easy stuff. Yeah. We're done. Boom. We've solved your problem. <laughs> open road. <laughs> Uh, next up, uh, one I want to do just because you don't get many uh, TV releases like this, and this is True Blood, the complete fifth season. Yes. Uh, when I say you don't get many TV releases, this is one that has the Blu-ray DVD combo plus the digital copy. Wow. Not many releases. Wow. Of TV Way shows, to go, HBO. Get copies. Granted, you know it's like a 13 episode season, so it's not like the full 20 something. But still. But it's it's pretty unique. Yeah. And I think it's very progressive, and they seem to be one of the few studios 
if you want to call them a yeah. studio, um, that seem to be doing that sort of thing. Yes. And, I mean, True Blood, I kind of think it jumped the shark like three seasons ago, personally. Um, but it's still it's still very interesting. It's still very well done in terms of like the effects and the production yes. value and stuff like that. It's got some good people, Alexander Skarsgård, mm -hmm. Anna, Anna Paquin, Paquin, Stephen Moyer, mm -hmm. Sam Trammell, like lots of good actors in it. I love that the three like main actors or three or four main actors, none of them are so southern. They're like you get like a, yes. they get like a British person, a Swiss or a, yes. yeah, I forget where Skarsgård's uh, from. Sweden, yeah, Swedish, so Swedish. There, yeah. I mean, right consonants, wrong. Yeah. wrong. Yeah. Hey, you see, right? Was it the right? I'm sorry. The wrong syllable. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Europe. I don't mean to if I do so much. Yeah, you're all the same. The same. <laughs> you white people all look but, the same. Like it's got a lot of talent. Uh, it's kind of an interesting premise. Mm -hmm. You know, vampires are known by yes. the world, and they're sort of become an accepted minority yes. if you call them accepted. Um, that's sort of the problem in the, the yes, story, for sure. But you know. Like, if you like naked people, this is your show. Naked uh, people in blood. Yeah, naked people in blood. If you like, perhaps, interesting stories, I might want to debate you on that. Yeah. But, you know, I can't, I can't, I won't fault you for liking it. It's Let's better than a lot. Let's say it falls a little bit more towards the campy side yes. with the storylines. Yes, and I don't do camp. I've said that before, so. I think it's interesting. I don't think I realized this because I've never really watched the show. I didn't realize that every episode title is a song either a popular or Christian music song, and mm. whatever song the episode title is, is played over the end credits. It's that's kind cool. of an interesting little yeah, bookending of things I didn't realize. So, In terms of the special features, though, you know, you got um, five commentaries with cast and crew, including Anna, Alan Ball, Anna Paquin, Stephen Moyer, Don't and many more. Don't get TV shows. No, which is cool, and you got Alan Ball and Anna Paquin, mm -hmm. so that's pretty significant right there. Yeah. Uh, you've got authority confessionals, learn about the mysterious institution known as the authority from the people who are part of it, mm. um, which is cool. You know, if you're a fan of the show, it's sort of like the governing body of gotcha. the vampires, if you will. Uh, there's true bloodlines and cover secrets from relationships past and present in this mm. engaging, fully interactive, revamped guy. <laughs> I see yeah, what they did it's very there. Very clever. I get it. And then, I get it. I'm tracking. Yeah. Okay. And then there's uh, inside the episodes. Get the backstories on each episode with revealing interviews from the show's writers, Ooh. which I think is kind of cool. Yeah. So, you know, it's not it's not the best release, but it's it's for a TV show though. It's pretty solid. For a TV show, it's pretty solid. Unlike I like that Dexter Lax yeah, last week. Yeah. I like that they have actual release in all the formats. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're a fan of True Blood, I would say it's a no brainer to get yeah. it. If you're not a fan of True Blood, I would say test the waters uh, with the first couple of seasons mm -hmm. before you get really spendy on this all. Yeah. But, um, I love that TV shows are starting to get those cr high def crazy releases because they're definitely yeah. amping up the production quality, and high def is pro and Blu ray are definitely worth it on shows yeah. like HBO shows. Totally. Uh, let's move into the film realm again and go sort of for. Um, cult mm -hmm. horror film. This time we're talking The Burning, yes. Collector's Edition. <coughs> For those of you who don't know, it's a, about a former summer camp caretaker who's horribly burned in a prank mm -hmm. who decides to go back in exact revenge. Yep. Cropsy. R yes, Cropsy, written b slightly before Friday the 13th. Yep, but very much the same sort of yep. feel to it. Mm -hmm. uh, not the mom, Friday yeah. the 13th, the Jason. Yes. Friday the 13th. But you know, it's, it's. I mean, this is being produced by Shout Factory's horror branch, Scream Factory. Very cool. Which is very cool. So you get, let's see, an audio commentary with director Tony Malum and uh, film journalist Alan Jones. Audio commentary from star Shelley Bruce and Bonnie Dorosky. Uh, let's see. There's an interview with editor Jack Shoulder. Hmm. Uh, an interview with Lou David, who played Cropsy. Oh, nice. That's very cool. And there is. Blood and Fire Memories, a detailed look at the creation of the film's makeup effects with special effects artist Tom, Tom Savini. Savini. Yep. So who didn't work on I think Friday the thirteenth part two because he was busy working on yeah. this movie. So it's it's I mean, you know, we love our criterion, but Shout Factory tends to Seriously. be right there. And they tend to do more um I don't know if you want to call it niche, unique, sort of yeah. non like mainstream. I would say more cult, the cult classics, yes. like the actual cult classics, not the ones that just were not box office successes, right. but everyone loves. Like, they're the actual like, like under other stuff besides like Godard. Yeah. You know, they're yeah. not they're not the exactly. the nose up. Not to say Criterion is, but no, it's, yeah. it, they they seem to be much more geared popular fan boys. Yeah, exactly, fanboys rather than like a uh, critically acclaimed. Yes. Um, I think it's interesting that for if you don't know much about this film, this is the uh, feature film debut of Jason Alexander. Wow. Fisher Stevens and Holly Hunter. 
That's awesome. And this is the film specifically that launched the careers of acclaimed producers Harvey and Bob Weinstein. Oh, well, good call on that one. Yep. I mean, they saw something and. How can you not like Cropsy? That's an awesome. Yeah. Awesome, man. <laughs> Even their mom, Miriam Weinstein, was a pre-production assistant on the film. So this is clearly cool. like they were way into that. Into yeah. that. Yeah. So very cool on that. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I, can't, I mean, there's a great poster Mondo did of yes. it too, which you can look up online. The Damn Bernie the Mondo. Moss. Oh, it's so. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he did it, but I it's just, still beautiful. I'm just gonna curse him anyway yeah. because Mondo. I can never own him. Yeah, like seriously. A, so I'm like be five tantalizing. <laughs> Such is life. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's move on to our last release. And, you know, this we, is a Criterion yeah, release. Yeah, we, we, we had Shout Factory. How often do you get Criterion in the same week? That is a good week mm -hmm. right there. And we're talking Medium Cool. Yes. Which is a, a sort of, I don't know what you call it, faux doc. Yeah. Faux doc fictional documentary it's a, a narrative film that's set in a real life setting yes it's about that a, was supposed to be having actors inserted into a situation and then making something out of it but unbeknownst to them the location they picked end up being a very well <laughs> the, the director haskell wexler mm -hmm. wanted to do sort of a political drama yes. in which you know there's going to be a rebellion and so he filmed during the 1968 <laughs> yes. democratic, democratic national convention, convention in chicago and he sort of had the the bet that there was going to be a riot mm -hmm. during it and so he filmed the movie during the riot i mean it's a narrative film it's yes. not a, a documentary yes. so it's sort of this interesting amalgam of fiction and mm -hmm. fact because the people there the that they, while the riot was going on were clearly rioting for their own sake not yes. for the film <laughs> but yes. they just Used it as a backdrop for a lot of stuff. But it's, and I think uh, they thought it was going to be a race riot, but it ended up being the like police riot, right? Wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was mostly like white people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's essentially about a journalist who discovers that his network is in cahoots with the FBI and sort of, you know, all the the problems that mm -hmm. they come in. Mm -hmm. So it's, I mean, it's very interesting. Uh, directed by Haskell Wexler, as I mm -hmm. mentioned. Stars Robert Forrester. Yes. In the lead, which is very cool. I mean, Criterion does it well, though. You know, they have a couple commentary tracks. They have a 55-minute documentary on the making of it. Uh, awesome. A new interview with Hax Haskell Wexler. That's quite a um, name. Yeah. And so there's <laughs> 4D uh, digital restoration yes. supervised by him as well. Or, sorry, approved by him. Same. So, yeah. So, you know, a very, very interesting, unique film. In really in-depth release, too. So I mean, just... but it's also, like, it's one of those films that's both interesting in terms of its own release, and it comes at a very interesting, unique point in history. Yes. So it's got a very big significance Yeah, so all those featurettes and commentaries behind the scenes stuff is going to be really interesting. Because yeah. that's the kind of thing, you know, we've talked about before. Whenever you see a documentary, that's the times more than ever we want there to be behind the scenes yeah. and extra totally. stuff. Because clearly there's more to it than just, I want to film a documentary and you film it. Like, yeah, you almost get a whole other film yeah basically just 55 I mean, minute documentary I mean, you're making of one. i mean just, plus interviews yeah. audio commentaries another uh excerpts from the sooner or later documentary criterion about harold blakenship which I is one of that seriously think criterion yeah. when 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 home video act if it ever actually bites the dust i think criterion will be the last ones to go yeah i mean you got i mean they they seem to be very focused on single format still you know blu-ray uh, yeah. dvd I haven't done any digital stuff besides hulu mm -hmm. whereas you know the burning comes in both blu-ray and dvd but no digital copy like it, it, i mean as soon as those sort of embrace like i would love to see what a criterion digital oh, release man. would look like and but we still love their other stuff yeah mm -hmm. um so that's it for this mm -hmm. week join us for our discussion of um epic. colin farrell yes for epic 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 <laughs> We'll see if it is quite as epic as it leads you to believe. Um, but you can find us, as always, at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes. We're on Blip. We're on Miro, Roku. Check in and get glue. Get some stickers. Get some stars on iTunes and Please some do. thumbs on YouTube. Leave us comments, and uh, we'll see you next time. Can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's tight. Don't even try to buy the sound. This is Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Rath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight